January 26, 2022. I moved the boat into the driveway because I was uh, done working on the interior. I wanted to put the car in the garage. So it was in uh, about 15 below zero wind chill last night, so it's a little chilly here. But I want to get going on the fun stuff. Um, got the motor to turn, and uh, I'm going to try and walk through that with you. So here we go. So, after a few issues, um, I did get the motor to turn. Um, Ned Kane Motors was exceptionally helpful. Um, I spoke to my retailer, and um, they kind of admitted to me that they were not really Hyper 9 guys. Um, but uh, Ned Kane was great. So, uh, you know about the batteries. Um, under that heat shrink there, we got a fuse. We got a shunt for the Renogy monitor there, which is optional. We go over, we see the controller there with the green light. Green is good. The three motor leads going over to the Hyper 9. And we've got the compact display working. We had a little issue with that. Self-inflicted, of course. And we got our pot box. That is a PB8. Um, we had to make an adjustment to make that function. Once again, that gain helped us out. And the SmartFuse software, a um, little bit kludgy, but um, once you get used to it, it's not bad. So um, this video is going to be a little longer than most of mine, but um, I, I think it's probably worth it. I didn't see a lot on YouTube. They're related to a Hyper 9 startup. Now coming around to the other side, um, the positive battery lead is going through a um, disconnect switch. I wouldn't do any of this without having that in the line. Then we go through the high voltage contactor and to the inverter controller. Um, Needless to say, we're dealing with a, a lot of control wiring here. Um, you definitely want to pick up um, a set of wire markers, and every time you identify a wire, um, mark it and mark it well. Um, you'll save yourself a lot of time in the future. So the way I'm going to go about this today is I'm just going to try and go as quickly as I can through the startup procedure in the um, net gain manual. Don't try to read this, but um, this is in the uh, pre-startup. Um, basically, they're telling you to download the SmartView software, uh, the latest firmware, and the clone file for your system, and the driver for your USB adapter. Um, go to the NetGain site and get the most recent, most recent versions of those, and make sure you get the clone file that is um, designed for your serial number. Um, the quick start guide after you do all that um, says I want you to follow the wiring diagram supplied by your dealer or shown on page 5. It's actually on a different page but um, that's quite a bit of stuff you got to do. The cable going over to the motor um, for the spin sensor and the temperature probe um, those connectors need to be installed by you after you cut the wire to the right length um, and you need to understand how to do amp seal connectors there's, there's plenty of videos on YouTube about that um, but this pinout diagram for the K1 connector which is the big one um, is very useful you're, you're going to become intimately familiar with that There's a minimum number of um, things that need to be connected before you can get the motor to spin. Um, so at a minimum, um, the interlock connector, um, which is uh, K1-4, needs to be connected to the K1-1 ground. And then at least the forward uh, needs to be also connected to the K1 ground need a key switch um, and that is connected to high voltage um, 
ultimately when you do your installation you're going to put a pilot relay in there because uh, you don't want to have that high voltage running up to your key switch so you definitely need that you need your um, main contactor that's the fuse your main contactor connections emergency switch and the um, the battery itself so needless to say that's got to be hooked up the three motor leads have to be hooked up but not right away they'll come later uh, the encoder connector has to be connected and what else we got here oh that's the coil for the high voltage contactor that has to be connected um, all this CAN bus stuff is optional I'm not using any of that and the display of course is optional um, thermal probe should also be connected so that's the minimum um, of things that need to be hooked up before you spin the motor. So there's instructions on the uh, amp seal connectors and um, plug wiring instructions. I suggest you take a look at a YouTube video um, before you do that. Um, I put some notes on here for myself um, just so I didn't screw it up um, in terms of exactly um, which wire goes to which terminal. Um, actually pretty easy once you get used to it and I think the amp seal is a good product. Main contactor, um, X1 and X2, and the um, coil wires are actually X1 and X2 and you can see here they go to um, on the big K1 connector, they go to pin 25 and pin 26. Um, the wires are not marked X1 and X2, but the positions that you see here on this sketch are correct, and they should be hooked up that way. If you're using the um, compact display, um, you're going to have to add a wire to the K1 connector that uses a, a different type of pin a round pin instead of a flat one um, but you have to add a wire and insert it into the k1 connector once again it sounds a little scary but um, it actually goes pretty well and then that will ultimately get hooked up to the number four spot number four spot no that's not right that gets hooked up to pin five on the um, the connector going to the compact display Forgot to mention, you're also going to need um, your throttle connector connected. I used um, a PB8, um, and I had to ask NetGain to um, make some adjustments to the software that I didn't have access to for that to work. Um, according to the instructions, if you use the Prius throttle, um, it should just be plug and play. So um, once you have everything connected, um, you want to have everything connected, including the B- minus and B+, plus, um, hooked up to the controller. Um, you don't want to have the three big motor leads connected, however. And then you can um, you want to move on to the next step, which in my book is step four. Um, and you don't want to hook those motor leads up until you get all the way through step 18. And basically what they're asking you to do as you go through these next step is just verify everything. Um, go back and double check everything that you just did. Um, probably a worthwhile step to do. Um, so ever, after everything is checked out, um, you can plug the K1 connector um, into the controller and connect the um, serial cable to the um, X1 controller as well in the K3 port. Uh, that goes to your computer and they ask you to check the connection. I don't know if you can see this here, but mine automatically went to COM4 and I said fine. So I'm going to go back up here and take us back home again. Once again, you got to get used to working uh, with this software. So hopefully you put all of the files in some place where you can find them easily because the next step here, you're going to go to manage 
and um, firmware update and now you find your firmware and once you um, get it in there uh, you can update the firmware that's the uh, the software that's built right into the um, into the controller itself and then it's going to ask you to upload the clone file um, and you've only got two options here either to you know go from the clone file to the x1 controller or vice versa obviously you want to upload that um, that all went actually very well for me so we're going to go um, back to the home screen and we're going to go to monitor and monitor inputs um, in order to get the thing to run uh, you got to activate a couple of inputs and tell you a little story here first um, I wasn't getting the motor to spin and um, the bottom line was that the uh, encoder signals the voltages were too high and the voltages are too high because I didn't have a ground connected correctly um, in the K1 connector and once I redid that um, so I was all good. So I was getting a 52 fault on that. Um, so anyway, you want to make sure that um, these voltages are all, I think it's under 3900 millivolts. Mine were up around 4500. So um, here's my little dashboard. Um, the key switch is on. And I'm going to turn on the interlock switch and when I do that you can see that we have traction enabled and then I'm going to turn on the forward switch and we have forward enabled. Um, one of the things in the, the sequence in the manual they don't tell you that you need that interlock um, connected but you actually do. I think it might be a step that they left out. So um, here we go. I put a little wood disc on the Hyper 9 so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to advance the throttle. And whoopee, there it goes. Now we don't have a load on this motor, um, so uh, we don't want to be spinning it beyond just, you know, really, really slow. Um, but, um, wow, well, we're going three miles an hour. It's adjustable based on the um, gear ratios that you enter. Um, so I was pretty happy. We're, I'm comfortable with um, the way it all went. Once again, net gain was great. Uh, great people to work with. And I skip one little minor step along the way. Um, obviously, the three three big motor leads need to be connected um, before you uh, get too far along. Um, and that's, that's spelled out in the instructions pretty clearly. You know, again, I'm out of sequence here. Forgot a couple of steps. Um, but um, as soon as you, uh, the first thing you've got to do after you hook the, the big motor leads up, I'm back at the home screen now, we're going to go to configure, and then we're going to go to traction, and that's not where we want to be. Well, let's try that again. Um, after you connect the three phase, go to configure and go to motor and control and it says commission uh, spin sensor down here. Um, one little thing that they're very clear about that um, you have to do is you can't commission the spin sensor more than 60 seconds after you turn the key switch on. So I would run through the um, the sequence on your laptop uh, once and then go back, turn the key switch off, turn it back on, and then click on commission spin sensor. Um, once again, that all went really well. Um, I thought that the spin sensor, the, the motor would spin smoothly. Um, it actually jogs, it, it moves, you know, fractions of a rotation at a time, so don't be freaked out by that. So, um, we're in pretty good shape um, in terms of bench testing the motor. Um, uh, I can have a lot more to come in the future. 
I think the next one is going to be um, the mechanical connection to the um, to the stern drive. I want to at least get part of that done. I want to check the runout on that uh, coupling you see over there. So that'll be on the next show. Thank you very much.